Hey YouTube, Chris with CB Model Works. Welcome back to the garage. So in this video, we're gonna get the interior finished up on this 442. So I started by spraying everything to me a semi-gloss black, and then I sprayed the white over it. I was hoping to get some shadows in the little panel lines and stuff, but I think I sprayed the white a little too thick. So I lost pretty much all the effect I was looking for, except on the little bottom edge of the door panel there, you can see it. And I'm just going through and painting all the little silver accents with some Vallejo Model Air Silver. So if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know I have kind of a bad habit of doing stuff off camera view. So I'm trying out a new camera angle on this one. I think this way I'll be able to keep more in camera view, so hopefully I won't miss as much. So while you guys watch me paint the black trim here with some Vallejo model color black, need some help figuring out which model to build next. So we're definitely gonna have a part four on this one. But after that, I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna build the 37 Ford pickup, which can be pretty much box stock, although I might try doing a little bit of rust, or if I wanna start working on the 72 Chevy pickup for the street machine group build so i'll let you guys help me decide that uh, let me know down in the comments which one you want me to work on next so on the steering wheel i sprayed the spokes with uh mr hobby superfine silver 2 and now i'm just going over the outside edges and the column with the vallejo model color black i really like that mr hobby paint it looks really nice on these models All right, carpet time. So for carpets, I like to use embossing powder instead of flocking powder, just because it's a little bit easier to clean up. I think the flocking powder looks a little bit better, but it just makes a huge mess. There's two ways you can do this, that I know of anyway. Uh, one is brushing on some PVA glue, the white glue, and then putting the embossing powder on. The other way, which is what I'm doing here, since I have to cover up the white overspray anyway i'm using some to me of semi-gloss black i think it is with just a little bit of leveling thinner just to slow down the drying time and then the embossing powder sticks to it just like it would the glue between the two i think the pva glue works a little bit better but since i had to cover up the white anyway i went with the paint technique on this one so I just kind of press it down a little bit, just lightly, not hard. And then you tap it off. And you can see it needs a little bit more, which is not a big deal. You just wait for it to dry, which the package shelf is already dry, being acrylic paint. So you just go over it again as many times as is needed. So now interior decals. There's a bunch for this one. We got our gauge decals and then all the wood trim. So gauge decals first. Get those all nice and lined up. You have to let these dry first because there's a wood trim that goes on top of them. So you're gonna wanna make sure those are nice and dry before you put the wood trim on. So this is the lower wood trim here. And it has detail on it for the radio and some switches. But the detail is also molded in, so I clipped that molded part out to flatten it so the decal would sit better. And then this is the only one on the interior that needed a little bit of help. So I hit it with a little bit of Microsoft, settled right down. Now moving on to the door. Oh, sorry, center console. A couple pieces of wood trim on this. They fit perfectly on the inserts. So I didn't need any uh, solvents or anything. Now we're on the door panels. This rear one here, there's a cutout where the uh, window crank is. So you just get it around there and then it just lines up perfectly. Same thing on the front. On the driver's side, it's got a spot for the switch. I believe that's for adjusting the mirrors or something. There's not one on the passenger side, it's only on the driver's side. So 
So now the gauges are dry, so putting the wood trim over them. This one you're going to want to be careful with because it's really thin in a couple of places. It didn't break on me and it sat down no problem, but you're just going to want to be careful not to rip it. And there's a little 442 emblem on the lower part there. Now we're on the seat belts. This is a seat belt set from Gopher Racing. It's got the buckles that say GM on them. I know there's a couple different ways of doing this, but this is how I do it. I tried making these seatbelt buckles one time out of just a sheet of styrene, and it was kind of fun to make them, but it took so long, and the photo etch looks so much better. It's well worth the six bucks to buy the photo etch set. I did learn from someone else on YouTube to cut the seatbelt material at an angle that helps you get it through. There you go. Repeat that four more times for the back seat. And now we're putting them on. So I'm just kind of ballparking where I need to trim it. I'm using these are some old sprue cutters from Amazon, cheapy ones. but they work well enough and just a little dab of CA glue and put it where you want it on the back seat. And again, repeat four times. So now they always stick up a little bit, so you got to get them to lay down. So I just use a tiny dab of CA glue, which is all you need on the underside there. And then you just stick them down wherever you want them. So now we're onto the front seats, pretty much same technique. I have a little tiny dab of CA glue in, on the bottom edge of the seat there. I just get the seat belt where I want it and then fold it over. If you guys haven't tried photo etch seat belts, you should. It makes a huge difference in how the interior looks. And they're really not hard once you do a couple sets. It's not hard to use. So yeah, just put the seat belt where you want it and then just fold it over. Leave it for a few seconds, that's all it takes, and then clip off the excess. Done and done. And same as the back seat, little dab to hold it down in place. That looks way better than using decal seat belts. Alright, final assembly on the interior. We got the seats and then the console goes in. And I had a little uh-oh on this one. I got the console in. I started putting the right side door card in and I almost forgot to paint the shifter knob. So I'm getting that real quick with some Vallejo white. And bump the camera. Sorry about that. All right, center console. Better get some tweezers because my fingers are too fat to fit in between those seats. All right, so here's where I had an issue. Started putting the right door card on. Got some glue on my right finger. My right finger stuck to the door card. And when I went to remove it, the whole thing popped out of my hand, knocked both seats, the console, and the door card off. And I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but it broke the shifter in half. So after a few not so kind words for myself, got it all back together. 
It's a little more careful with the other door card this time. I nearly forgot to put these pedals in. This is the I think this is the first car I've done that had separate pedals. They didn't come attached to the door to the uh, dashboard. So we got our dash in and interior is pretty much done. I did get the shifter glued back on. Luckily it broke kind of flat so it was pretty easy to glue back on there. And I didn't even use any glue on the dash. It just slid right into the slots in place. And there we go. Interior done. Pretty happy with how this one came out. So next video we should uh, get the last few details done. Uh, polish it up. Get the chrome trim done. And final assembly. So hopefully I'll have that in a couple weeks. Things have been a little little nuts lately so maybe a couple of weeks in between videos but don't worry the videos are coming I'm not going to stop doing this stuff it just might get a little bit longer in between so thanks for watching and hanging out with me today and we'll see you guys in the next video